Hello everyone. In the previous video, we have proved a lemma in which we have proved that every path, uh, every path uh, F beginning at B naught in the space B that has a unique lifting to a path F curl in E, which is beginning at point E naught, where E naught is the point whose image is B naught under the mapping P, where P E to B is a covering map. So now we will prove a lemma in which we will prove that uh, if we have a continuous mapping from I cross I to B, then that has a unique lifting. It means uh, in this lemma, basically we will prove that uh, as path uh, can be lifted to a path, similar in a similar manner, path homotopies, they also can be uh, lifted to path homotopies. So uh, let us firstly write the statement of this lemma. Now let P from E to B, this is a covering map. And uh, uh, this covering map cover, uh, maps point E naught to B naught. And uh, let we have this map F from I cross I to B. Let us say this be any continuous map, which maps 0, 0 to point B naught. Then we will prove that there is a unique lifting of this mapping F to a continuous map F curl, which is a mapping from I cross I to E, such that this map maps the point 0, 0 to point E naught. And further, we will prove that if the given map F is a path homotopy between any two maps, then this F curl, this is also a path homotopy. So let us prove this. For the given mapping F, we have to define F curl from I cross I to E, which is a lifting of F, which means P circle F curl should be equal to F. So we firstly define F curl at point zero zero. We have to define it on I cross I, which means a unit scale. So we firstly define it to be E naught at point zero zero. Next, uh, we will use our previous lemma to extend F curl on the left hand edge zero cross I and the bottom edge I cross zero of the scare I cross I. So uh, this is our scare. I cross I. So we have defined F, uh, F curl at this point zero, zero. Now we extend because in the previous lemma, we have proved that if we have a path F, then that F can be lifted to F curl. Uh, then we can define F curl by that lemma on this bottom edge and on this left hand edge. That means uh, this I cross zero region and zero cross I region of this box I cross I. So then uh, after extending F curl to these two lines, we will extend to, uh, we will extend this function uh, in this manner. We will divide these two axes 0 to 1 in the small rectangles. We will divide this whole area into small rectangles. Let us say this is 
point S naught, this point is S1, this is S2, and so on. Similarly here, this point is T naught, this is T1, then this point is T2, then this is T3, and so on. So we take partitions of both the interval, this 0 to 1 and this 0 to 1, and these are the partitions S0, S1, S2, and so on, T0, T1, T2, and so on. So the last point we will assume here, this is SM, and the last point here is, let us say, Tn. So this, these two partitions, they divide this whole region I cross I into rectangles of this type, I, I cross J, J. Now this I, I cross J, J, this is basically S, I minus 1 to S, I into T, J minus 1 to T, J. So these are the rectangles in which this I cross I is divided. So uh, firstly, uh, we have uh, we have extended this F curl to this bottom line and this left hand edge. And now, uh, suppose uh, this each rectangle, suppose this each rectangle, this is mapped by F. Now, because uh, we have this mapping, uh, we have this mapping E to B. This is our P map. And from this rectangle, I, uh, from this square I cross I to B, we have a given mapping F. We want to find a mapping F curl from I cross I to E such that this triangle, this is commutative triangle, which means such that this composition P circle F curl that will be equal to F. So uh, now here we can assume that each rectangle, uh, this I, I, J, J, this is mapped by this mapping F onto uh, into an open subset of the space B and that space is evenly covered by P because of the uh, Lebesgue number lemma. So because of the Lebesgue number lemma, we can find uh, an op open cover of uh, this space B such that each rectangle here that is mapped into an open subset of that open cover in this space B and that open, uh, open set is evenly covered by uh, this mapping P because P is a covering map here. So we can say that I, I, J, J, each rectangle of this type, which means for all I and for all J, this is mapped by F into an open set of B that is evenly covered by P. So uh, now uh, we define this lifting map F curl we define this lifting map of curl step by step. So uh, we will start from the first rectangle, I1 cross J1. So for this rectangle, firstly we define the mapping on this rectangle, I1 cross J1, then we uh, extend this F curl on all of the rectangles in uh, I, I cross J1. That is in the bottom row, this row. Firstly, we will define on I1 cross J1, then it will be on uh, I2 cross J1, then I3 cross J1, and so on. So we will define on the rectangles in this bottom row. And then uh, with the help of this, we will define in the second row, and then we will define in the uh, rectangles of third row, and so on. So we will able to define uh, the mapping F curl on whole of the square I cross I. So in general, now up to this F curl is defined on the set A, uh, where, where A is the set, which is union of I cross zero and zero cross I. So by our previous lemma, we have defined F curl on this bottom line and this left hand edge, and let us say their union is A. So uh, up to this, F curl is defined on this set A. And, uh, and let us assume that uh, 
And this F curl is defined on all the rectangles previous to I, I naught cross J, J naught. Let us assume that F curl is defined on all the rectangles previous to this rectangle. That means uh, we can say this is defined for all the rectangles uh, I, uh, all the rectangles I, I cross J, J for which I is uh, for which either j is less than j naught and for the and for those where j is equal to j naught i is less than i naught so uh, since we know that f curl this is a continuous lifting of mapping f uh, restricted to a this f curl this is lifting of mapping f to a because uh, we have defined f curl on set a and on the set a it is lifting of f so we define this f curl on i i naught cross j j naught so let us uh, see how we define this on this rectangle firstly we choose open set u of b open set U of B, uh, which is evenly covered and which contains the set F of I, I naught cross J, J naught, because we have previously uh, said that uh, image of each rectangle I, I cross J, J that is contained in some U, which is open set in B. So let us take that U in which uh, this image is contained. And this U is evenly covered by P. And if this is evenly covered by P, then we can take the partition of this in its inverse into slices. So let us take that P inverse U has this partition has uh, this sets V alpha as the partition into slices which means P inverse U is union of all these V alphas and these V alphas are open disjoint sets in E and uh, they are, uh, they then each V alpha is uh, homeomorphic to U. Then F curl, we have assumed that F curl is defined on the set C where C is A intersection I I naught cross j j naught c is defined on this particular portion a intersection i i naught and j j naught so this set is union of the left and bottom edges of the rectangle because a we have taken the set uh, we are already we have defined the uh, mapping f curl so uh, if A is the set where it is already defined and then we take intersection of A with I, I naught and J, J naught, then it will be just the bottom and the left hand edge of the rectangle I, I naught and J, J naught. And because that has a common point, so this is a connected set. So C is connected. Now we know F curl is continuous mapping. So this F curl C, which is image of a connected set, this is also connected and since it is connected it will lie entirely in one of the sets v alpha so uh, this will be contained in exactly one set v alpha let us say v naught say this is contained in v naught then uh, if we take the mapping p naught which is the restriction of p from v naught to u uh, where this p naught is basically restriction of P to V naught, then we know this is a homeomorphism because every V alpha is homeomorphic to U. And since we know F curl is a lifting of mapping F restricted to A, so it means for each X in C, what is P naught of F curl into X? Uh, sorry, f curl of x. So that will be p of f curl x. 
because uh, this is lifting so p curl p circle f curl because p not is a uh, p not is a restriction of p so we can replace this p not by p and p circle f curl on set a this is equal to f and because this x belongs to a so this is basically fx so it means f curl at this point x this is basically p not inverse f of x now we can take inverse of p not because this is a homeomorphism so uh, now we are able to extend f curl by defining this f curl equals to p not inverse fx because for all x in c this is already f curl x is equal to p not inverse fx now we define for each point of uh, i i not and j j not so define f curl on this rectangle i i not and j j not by f curl x is equal to p not inverse of fx so uh, if we define f curl like this on this rectangle then continuing this process we can define f curl on all of the rectangles and uh, since uh, they have some common area which is connected so uh, this f curl will be continuous by pasting lemma so this map f curl is continuous by pasting lemma and this is how we can define f curl on whole of the uh, area whole of the set i cross i and this will be lifting of uh, f because we have defined f curl in this sense p not inverse of fx so by this definition this f curl will be uh, obviously a lifting of f so this will satisfy this basically p circle f curl is f so this uh, this proves the existence of uh, lifting but now we will prove uniqueness part so Uh, to prove the uniqueness we notice at each step of the uh, construction of f curl so firstly uh, we have defined f curl on the bottom line then on the bottom row and uh, then second row then third row and so on so continuously we have extended f curl so uh, once we have defined f curl at point 0 0 and this is defined as e not specifically that means f curl is completely determined because f curl at 0 0 is e not and uh, when we define f curl on the first rectangle i1 cross j1 then uh, we have assumed that this image of uh, i1 cross j1 under the mapping f that is contained in u and that u is uniquely determined that u is uniquely determined and that u is evenly covered by p and from that u we come to uh, find out the sets b alphas which are uh, which are giving a partition of p inverse u into slices and from those b alphas we take only that uh, v not in which uh, f curl at 0 0 which means e not contains so that is a unique v alpha and uh, we define f curl on whole of the in whole of the rectangle i1 cross j1 to be the inverse of p not at fx for each x in that rectangle and that p not is a uh, unique mapping which is basically restriction of uh, p at that set v not which is uniquely determined so because of all these reasons we can say that f curl is uniquely determined so this proves the uniqueness of f curl so now uh, the second part of the theorem uh, we have to prove that if f is a homotopy then f curl is also a homotopy so if f carries whole of the left edge into a single point b not uh, let us say f is a homotopy if f is homotopy uh, let us say it is a homotopy between paths f and g and where these paths f and g let us say their starting and ending points are x not and x1 so if f is a homotopy so basically uh, we have this thing that f is a mapping from i cross i to b such that f of s0 that is f of s 
and f of s1 that is g of s and f of 0 t this is x naught and f of 1 t this is x1 so this thing f of 0 t is equal to x naught says that uh, the left edge of the uh, scare i cross i that goes to point x naught and the right edge goes to point x1 so if the whole edge whole left edge of uh, i cross i goes to a single point then because f curl is a lifting so it means p circle f curl is f so it carries whole of the edge into the point uh, into the set p inverse b naught but because we have already proved that p inverse b naught has the discrete topology uh, as a subspace of e and uh, we know uh, the set zero cross i that is connected so let me explain it by diagram so uh, we have this thing this is a scare i cross i now we are saying that uh, that this left edge zero cross i this left edge that goes to now let us say this is a space b and here we have x naught and x1 we have two paths let us say f and g such that capital f is a homotopy between f and g now we are saying the whole left edge this goes to point x naught and the whole right edge goes to point x1 and since f curl is a homotopy uh, so if this whole edge goes to point x naught then uh, because this is mapping f now here we have space e this is f curl now this is p now since this thing holds p circle f curl is f so f curl maps this whole zero cross i to p inverse b naught so this uh, edge zero cross i that will be mapped to the set p inverse b naught but this p inverse b naught this has discrete topology and we know this set zero cross i this is uh, connected set and this mapping f curl is continuous so continuous image of connector set should be connected but in the discrete topology the uh, singleton sets they are only connected sets so uh, this this must be just a point but we know at point zero zero if image of f is uh, x naught say b naught then image of uh, this f curl that will be e naught so that is a point, one point set so if the image of this point is e naught then the image of whole of this edge that will be e naught so uh, it means this is just a point similarly we can prove that f curl of one cross i that is also a point so if this is a point this is a point that means f curl is a homotopy because uh, both the edges left edge and right edge under this f curl they are going to a point and we are saying f curl is continuous map so if both of these edges going to a point that means this f curl is basically a homotopy between two paths so uh, this proves that if f is a homotopy path homotopy then f curl is also a path homotopy